Okay, so in this video, I will be going over how to minimize the amount of tin needed to create a cylindrical can with a top and bottom when I am given the volume of that tin can. So it says, the, vol the volume of a cylindrical tin can with a top and bottom is to be 16 pi cubic, cubic inches. If a minimum amount of tin is to be used to construct the can, what must the height in inches of the can be? So we're provided with volume. So the first thing I do is go ahead and write down the volume. It's equal to 16 pi cubic inches. After that, I read the sentence one more time. It says, if a minimum amount of tin is to be used. That tells me that I'm going to minimize surface area in order to construct this can. So now I've got two different formulas in play. I've got volume of a cylinder and surface area of the cylinder. So in the volume formula, which I'm given a, a quantity for, I'm going to now replace V with its actual volume formula, which is pi r squared h. So pi r squared h is going to be equal to 16 pi inches cubed. From there, my goal is to isolate the letter h in order to eliminate one of the independent variables in the problem. I want to have a surface area formula with just the letter r so that I can very easily differentiate and move forward with the optimization process. So once I've isolated h, you'll notice now I've canceled out the pi's, and we've got a final expression for h, which is 16 over r squared. From there, I went ahead and wrote down the surface area formula, and I also drew a cylinder. So in the cylinder, you can see it's comprised of two circles, top and bottom, as well as the lateral surface, which actually forms a rectangle. If you were to peel open a cylinder, and lay it down, it forms a rectangle. The rectangle will have a length of 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle, and it will have a width of height. So you can see that in this picture here. This is the lateral surface of the cylinder. So when you're going ahead and finding the surface area of the cylinder, you're going to have two circles, one on top and one on bottom, so 2 pi r squared, two times the area formula for a circle, plus the lateral area, which is this rectangle down here in step 6, which is 2 pi r circumference times the height. So now you can see the two independent variables. My goal is to get rid of each. So in the next step, call it step 7, even though I don't think I wrote 5, but there it is. In step 7, I've replaced h with the expression we came up with over here. And now the rest of it's going to be simplifying until I get to a point where I can take the derivative of s as easily as possible. So you can see in the step 8 here, what I've done is multiply the 2 pi r times 16. You get 32 pi r divided by r squared. After that, since there's an exponent of 1 in the r in the numerator, you're going to go ahead and simplify those two expressions with r to the first and r to the second, leaving you with 1r in the denominator. And then the final step down here is to rewrite the original equation that you're going to optimize, you're going to minimize in this case, as s equals 2 pi r squared plus 32 pi r to the negative first. I've rewritten that as a polynomial. The reason I'm doing that is so that it's easy to take the derivative. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop this video here. The next step would be to take the derivative of the surface area formula, find the zeros, perform a sign analysis, and then move forward with answering the question. And there may be another video to follow.